And we're live. Hello, everyone. My name is Peter Escher, Director of Marketing at PitchBook. And I'm John Gabbert, the founder and CEO of PitchBook. We are excited to be with you today. This is our first Facebook Live, I think. It is our first. So welcome. Thanks for joining us. Today, we want to talk about entrepreneurship. We want to talk about John's entrepreneurial journey. John, you've been at this for about 10 years, which is hard for me to believe, uh, maybe hard for you to believe. And yeah. we want to talk about your journey from startup to acquisition by Morningstar recently and then beyond. Sounds good. OK. To get us started, though, we thought it'd be fun to do some quick hit questions. So I'm going <clears> to <throat> ask you some questions about entrepreneurship. You respond in a sentence or two. You got it. All right. First question, do you think entrepreneurs are made or are entrepreneurs born? Good question. Uh, I have four kids, so I've thought about this. I think that they're, they're first made and then born, and then they become entrepreneurs. I like it. OK. Um, what is more important for an entrepreneur to have, grit, which is a popular word these days, or to be super smart? Well, you know, I think that it takes a balance on a lot of things, but I think all else being equal, I'd go with grit. OK. Uh, you evaluate a fair amount of business plan competitions. You spoke at the University of Washington business plan competition last year. What do you look for in a business plan? And what common mistakes do you see in business plans? So I, I would probably break it into two categories. Um, you know, typically the students that are doing the business plan competition just for the experience of doing the business plan uh, and say the competition of that. And I think for them, I look for a very thoughtful business mm. plan with right. details, you know, especially around financials where I think that's usually the, the piece that's lacking the most on the expense side. And then for those that are really looking to start that business, the biggest thing I look for is, you know, how badly do they want to actually start that business? Because um, mm -hmm. I think that's one of the biggest factors in determining success is how bad they actually want to do it. I want to just follow up on that. So why is that so important? Why is passion and that stick to itiveness so important, do you think? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, it's, uh, you know, there's a lot of days that are really, really hard. And, um, you know, I think that want is probably about the vaguest word out there. Mm. Uh, you know, I can want to have a donut this morning or I could want to breathe this morning and the, the range of um, difference between those two things is immeasurable. So, but I, so I think a lot of it just depends on how badly they really want to do it. Awesome. Um, let's, let's take that thread um, and let's now talk about PitchBook. Yep. You often talk about the purpose of PitchBook. It began with a customer problem. You still talk about that because I hear you talk about that all mm -hmm. the time. So can you tell us a little bit about PitchBook, why you started it, what was the customer problem you were trying to solve? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, we've always had focus as a big thing at PitchBook, and we are truly focused on serving the heck out of our customers. Uh, and I started PitchBook after working for nine years at a company that was very focused on researching venture capital. And the specific need that we were looking to, to meet early on was having a private equity deal database for private equity firms, investment banks, lawyers, lenders, accountants, corporate development. And uh, that product did not exist, a high quality information product covering mm. private companies, specifically those backed by private equity firms. So that's it uh, from day one we've been really focused on. And you know, since then, we've expanded into uh, a number of other data sets. But that was our first focus. Yeah. And it shows up. We, we often talk about customers are king around here. And that's the mm -hmm. value that, that's on our walls, on our coffee mugs. and. Yep. And that's really that's We really live neat. that. We live it. All right. So you mentioned, just going back to what you were saying previously about wanting to do something versus needing to do something and entrepreneurship being hard. Mm -hmm. um, I've heard you talk about your own journey. Uh, I suppose that every entrepreneurial journey is hard and difficult mm -hmm. and has its trials. Uh, yours may have been even a little bit more hard in that you were launching a financial services product right on the cusp of the Great Recession 10 years ago. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit about what that was like? Uh, personally, any lessons that you learned from starting the company at that point in time? Sure. Yeah, you know, when we first started the company in March of 2007, it still seemed like a pretty good time. Um, you know, the credit crunch set in later in 2007 and then recession in 08 and 09. And it was incredibly challenging. Uh, you know, I lived away from my family while I was still working in my previous company. That was probably the hardest time in my life. And then, you know, 
building a financial information product, serving investment banks, private equity firms, et cetera, you know, during 08 and 09, when many of them weren't even sure if they were going to have a job the following week. So, wow. you know, much less the interest in subscribing to a product to help them source deals, do deals when they weren't doing right. any deals. Right. And uh, so it was incredibly challenging. And again, that's where that focus piece came from was, hey, let's just really focus on the needs of customers so that when the dust settles, um, that we'll be in a good place to, to grow the business. Yeah. Um, one of the, the numbers that I, I often think about is when you went to pitch funding for this company, PitchBook, um, it sounds like you were turned down maybe 200 times or mm -hmm. by 200 investors, whatever. Yeah. I don't know if that's the right number, but it was a, a big yeah. number. Can you just, for, for people who might be doing the same thing, talk about what that was like and what, what lessons you learned? Yeah, yeah. I, I think there were over 200 people that said no, and whether that be wow. angel investors or venture capital firms. And you know, I'll, I'll, I'll cut them a little bit of slack in that it was a challenging time. It was probably see, hard to see um, you know, in 08 and 09 you know, how we were going to, to make a go of this. So uh, I'll cut them maybe a little bit of slack, but yeah, I mean, it, it was a it was a slog for sure. Um, and I think this, you know, back to your earlier question about smarts or grit, you know, certainly it's nice to have both. But, you know, being able to show up every single day um, and no matter what happened yesterday, I think the biggest thing as a startup is you got to survive to see tomorrow. So, you know, you got to put a smile on and, um, you know, just get after it one day after the next. Yeah. Well, the movie has a happy ending. Uh, we we pitch book was just acquired. It's not over. It's just not, <laughs> the first yeah. episode, We're, and we'll talk about it not being over because yeah. I know that's something that um, uh, you think a lot about. That mm -hmm. uh, we were recently acquired by Morningstar. Yep. And so let's talk about that uh, that process and, and about Morningstar. So, um, what drew you to Morningstar in the first place six or seven years ago? I yeah. think and and just talk a little bit about maybe the values and the commonalities between. The two companies. Sure. So, you know, the relationship with Morningstar started in the summer of 2009. Uh, so we raised capital from about 17 angel investors. And yep. Morningstar was the very last investor in our Series A. And we raised that, that capital a little over $4 million between 07, 08, and 09. And Morningstar was the last investor in the Series A in September of 2009. And it came from, you know, a cold call to their founder, Joe Mansueto. No uh, kidding. Yeah, we had good conversations through the summer of 2009 into the fall, their due diligence, and then uh, they made the investment in September. And, you know, so the, the thing about our relationship with Morningstar is that we've had, you know, seven, eight years to build trust with them. Uh, and I think from a core values perspective, mm -hmm. how we focus on customers, customer needs, um, how we focus on culture, innovation, building products, uh, we're very, very similar. So, you know, when PitchBook got to a size where we were starting to hit the radar uh, for, for some strategics as well as some financial buyers, uh, and we felt that, you know, it was nearing the point where it's probably a prudent decision to strongly consider, um, you know, that next step, you know, having conversations with Morningstar and all of the trust that we've built over the years and, you know, the comfort that they were going to let us continue to do what we do mm -hmm. as a business. Uh, which is exactly what we're doing today. You know, we still fund it from our own revenues like we have for the last handful of years, and uh, we're very focused on growth. So uh, that's really what, what led to uh, next chapter with Morningstar. Yeah, so the movie is not ending. Mm -hmm. There is a next chapter, and let's yeah. talk a little bit um, about that. Um, maybe let's just talk about product and, and, um, and the customer need out there and, and where you see Morningstar and PitchBook in so many words, coming together and serving a customer need. Sure. You know, and I think we have, you know, very complementary data sets. Um, you know, Morningstar, they have uh, incredible data sets covering public equities, uh, the largest proprietary independent research group. And, you know, it's a lot of that information that we're looking to leverage for our customers, for PitchBook customers today, investment banks, private equity firms, corporate development groups, among others. Uh, so integrating a lot of what Morningstar has today um, you know, into PitchBook. And I think there's you know, other, other things where we're going to you know, add value to Morningstar products, Morningstar Direct, you know, information that we have on yep. institutions, endowments, foundations, the fund performance data that we have, obviously a core for Morningstar uh, as it relates to mutual fund data. So you know, we have a lot of data that you know, we look to, 
to provide to Morningstar customers to, to provide more value. Yeah. And then kind of on the, maybe on, on this idea of next chapter and, and what is coming next, uh, some people may look at, at you at PitchBook and say, well, you know, they did it. The, the, the journey that started 10 years ago, um, that, that's been, maybe that dream has been fulfilled. What, um, what's inside maybe that keeps you focused on focus, yeah. as we say around here, and excited for the next thing? What, what is that that, yeah. uh, that drives you? You know, I think it's, um, it's about potential. And, you know, what is our potentiality as a company? And I think that's what it's been yeah. from the beginning. You know, uh, some people say, all right, you know, what's your number? What's your goal? What not? You know, my, my objective with PitchBook is just to maximize our potential. Uh, mm -hmm. and so there's a lot of runway ahead. Um, you know, there's a lot of customers, firms that, or I should say firms that are not customers yet today. And there's a lot of people at existing firms that are, that are customers, but not everybody's a user. So we have an incredible amount of runway to keep growing. And, uh, you know, as you know, we show up every day and push on this to, to, to continue to grow. So uh, that's what I enjoy doing, you know, showing up with the team and, and pushing on it every single day. Yeah. Okay. Do we have any questions that have come in? If not, um, oh, it looks like one just came in. Let's talk a little bit about hiring. Yeah. Um, talk a little bit about the growth plans here in Seattle in our New York office, London office. For somebody out there who might be interested in joining PitchBook, um, what, what thoughts would you have for them? Can you talk a little bit about our growth? Sure. Uh, well, you know, we've always grown, you know, high 60% on up back through time. Uh, you know, that was our growth last year, high 60s. And, you know, this year we're looking to push, you know, over 50%. So we have, you know, I would think, you know, pretty aggressive goals for continued growth. You know, we have 625 people on our team today. Uh, we anticipate, you know, again, growing significantly this year. And that's across the entire company. It's, you know, it's research, it's product development, sales, marketing, uh, everything that helps support it, editorial finance, um, you know, so we're going to continue to grow significantly this year and we're always looking for, you know, good, sharp people that are um, going to be team players. And again, you know, we look for that potential just like we push on it in the company. You know, we look for potential in, in candidates and um, yeah, look for another big year. Okay. So if you are listening and you are a good, sharp, smart <laughs> person with potential, yeah. think about, think about PitchBook in our Seattle, New York or London office. I think we'll wrap there unless... You have anything to add? No, I think that sounds good. All right. I'm Peter. I'm John. Thanks for joining us. Signing off from PitchBook. Thank you.